The British Empire had been continuously humiliated by the Bourbons. Their massive empire had eclipsed the British due to a simple victory on the mainland. Despite the loss of their North American territories, British Stoicism lived on. After the French Revolution began, their former greatest adversary became their most loyal ally. However, the Bourbons were clearly not suited to establish an everlasting empire like the British had. Their viceroyalties had quickly gained independence, and the British had to continuously attempt to prop up their backward state. But after the Second Bourbon-American War ended with their supposedly most loyal nobility betraying them, it was clear that there was no hope for the Bourbon Empire to continue. As tensions boiled over once again in Europe, the British and their exiled allies of the Portuguese and Bourbons had a perfect opportunity to destroy the French and Iberians. But would the Bourbons be seen as liberators like the British were anticipating? Will the strength that they had gained be enough to stop Napoleon's limitless ambition? What was Napoleon up to during the Bourbon-American War? We'll find out the answers to these questions in Episode 4 of Project Bourbon, an alternate Napoleonic era. Thanks for tuning in so far to the series, but if you didn't know, this is a multi-episode alternate history. You can find the link to the playlist in the card just above. I hope you all enjoy. In our history, the Third Coalition War began after the Austrians and Russians had declared war on France in 1805. In this timeline, this is also the case. But just like our history, Napoleon had quickly imposed his authority onto his adversaries. Napoleon makes quick work of the Bavarian army through encirclement. The Russians would attempt to save the Bavarians, but would be destroyed in the Battle of Austerlitz. This Third Coalition War was the shortest yet and at no point was Napoleon under any threat. Napoleon would do his best to ensure that Bavaria would never rise against his authority again. He would demand heavy monetary compensation, but would also carve out the Kingdom of Bohemia and grant it to his brother. In our timeline, he would have become the King of Naples. However, due to the Parthenopean Republic living on, thanks to the Iberians and their influence, he would become King of Bohemia instead. With Bavaria utterly destroyed, Napoleon would establish the Confederation of the Rhine, irrevocably damaging the legitimacy of the title of the Holy Roman Empire, leading to Bavaria destroying the title. While Bavaria had, by this point, thoroughly submitted themselves to Napoleonic authority, the Prussians had had enough, soon invading them in what became the War of the Fourth Coalition. Once again, a German country declared war on Napoleon, and once again, Napoleon had utterly humiliated them. Just like our history, Napoleon quickly carves through the Prussian army, forcing them to move into the east. In our history, this is when Napoleon would be mired in the eastern battles between themselves and the combined allied forces. However, Russia in this timeline would decide to betray the allies and join the French against Prussia and Sweden. The Franco-Russian partition of Prussia would see the Kingdom of Bohemia reclaiming Silesia and the Duchy of Warsaw being established by Napoleon. Meanwhile, the Russians would gain all the non-Prussian Baltics and Lviv. This new era of French-Russian collaboration would lead to Napoleon's grasp on Europe becoming cemented even further. Despite this, the British have remained at war with the French, attending their landings against Iberia alongside with their Bourbon puppets and allied Portuguese exiles. The landings had some success, but lacked local support. Napoleon quickly moved to push the exiles back, successfully doing so. On his way through Iberia, he noted the warm reception that he gained from the local Spanish. These Spaniards had been clearly chafing against the Iberian Republic, wishing to once again be considered Spanish and not Iberian and to put their faith in the mark who restored the papal authority rather than practicing heresy and marrying Protestants. Due to the divergences of this timeline, the Spanish would be far less desiring of a Bourbon restoration, and instead would plead to Napoleon to restore order in their nation. So, after the Iberians had gained Napoleon's support against the British invasion, 
Napoleon would betray them, using his currently stationed soldiers in their nation to quickly neutralize the Iberian government. The meddling support for the Republic quickly allowed Napoleon to subjugate the entirety of the peninsula, and due to the Catholic conservatives in Spain wishing to align with Napoleon instead of the Bourbons, there would be very little support for any sort of peninsula war to happen in Spain. Now that Napoleon had Spain under his control, he had contemplating simply claiming the throne for himself. This may sound like an unreasonable action, but given the history of Iberia up until this point in this timeline, this would lead to far more stability than you may initially realize. The fates of France and Spain have been intertwined since the founding of the Bourbon Empire a century ago. The French and Spanish common folk would have migrated freely between the major cities of each nation and gained a cultural unity between the two. The advent of the French and Spanish revolutions had a kindled nationalist sentiment, but divided the harmony that blossomed under their shared monarch. Therefore, if Napoleon had claimed the throne for himself, the two nations would be united once again. Napoleon would consider his options as the Regency Council of Spain convened. There is also the consideration of the Portuguese throne to consider. Napoleon could claim the throne for himself, but the Portuguese were not a part of the Bourbon Empire, and would therefore only increase the resistance of the Portuguese exiles. So, instead, Napoleon would approach the exiled Portuguese with a proposal. If you betray the British and join my alliance, and bind our dynasties together through marriage, I will return Portugal to you. Due to the British and their actions against the Bourbons, and Napoleon's offer being that of a place in his new order, instead of yet another British subject, the Portuguese would accept, extending the Napoleonic Wars to the Americas. This solution solves all of Napoleon's problems regarding the occupation of Portugal, but also provides him a chance to gain an heir. He has been attempting to have a child with his first wife, Josephine. However, since she had grown too old, she was unable to become pregnant. So Napoleon would marry a daughter of the Portuguese king. Now, Napoleon would have a chance for an heir, and not only that, but his son would have claims on all the Portuguese and their empire, further cementing his legacy and entrenching his position in Iberia. With the sudden flip of Russia and now Portugal to the French faction, the British were suddenly on the back foot. But despite all these betrayals, Britain still ruled the waves. They would be able to keep their sphere of influence in America with both the Royal Navy and the Bourbon Armada under their control. Napoleon was aware of this disadvantage, so he would attempt to perform economic warfare against the British by announcing the Continental System. The Continental System is something that Napoleon had enacted in our history and would serve the same purpose of this timeline. A Continental Embargo on British Goods. No mainland European nation was to trade with Britain or else they would face Napoleon's wrath. This had initially caused Britain to suffer economically. However, they resolved the financial issue by trading with other nations. In our timeline, this is effective, but in this timeline, there were far fewer nations willing to trade with the British. New Spain, Peru, La Plata, and the United States of America had strategic interests to distrust the British, especially since they controlled the Bourbon dynasty, who had wished to claim their old colonial territories, or the British held territories that those nations had already claimed. The British had to make some concessions in order to make up for the market access that they had lost in Europe. The main solution that they had undertaken was the integration of the Caribbean islands that were formerly Bourbon Crown land back into their empire, establishing the Dominion of the Caribbean. Despite the treasonous activity that this implied, the new Dominion was stable. It had integrated the British, French, and Spanish possessions of the region and now, much like Canada in its early years, had a representative body which ensured the religious tensions between Protestants and Catholics would be mediated. This also included the gradual revocation of slavery. Overall, a much more moral society for the people of the Caribbean rather than continued subjugation by Bourbon reactionaries. With this action, the British have secured their economy, but have spurned the Bourbons. The current leader of the exiles and claimant to the Bourbon Empire was perfectly content with this development. In our history, he was known for being a rather lame king who had no concern for ruling, rather liking to live in comfort. His son, however, was the opposite. He attempted to take the throne from his father prematurely through a coup. 
Whether this is out of a concern for the Spanish people or his own ambition is up for debate, but in this timeline he would be far more justified in establishing a resistance. With the founding of the Dominion of the Caribbean, the only remaining crown land of the Bourbons were Sardinia and Sicily. Therefore, Ferdinand VII, after the failed invasion of Spain by the Bourbon British armies, would divert his armada to Sicily, expelling the British garrisons there. He would soon declare repentance to the Pope for participating in the Mexican heresy and approached Napoleon, seeking a deal much like he had offered the Portuguese. Britain is surrounded by enemies. Despite their influence and wealth, they have consistently been denied their advantage by Napoleon's diplomatic cunning. With the anti-British Bourbon's seizure of their Italian territories, their rapprochement with Napoleon, the Portuguese and Russian defections, the potential for Napoleon to execute a naval invasion to the Isles is now certainly possible. Would Napoleon consider conceding former Bourbon territory to the renegade king? If he does, would Nelson manage to defeat the Spanish Armada like he had in our history at the Battle of Trafalgar? Or would the overextended British be unable to formulate a response? Had Russia been complying with the continental blockade, what would Napoleon's response be if he hadn't been? All of these questions and more will be answered in Episode 5 of Project Bourbon. That's it for episode four. Thank you so much for watching. Things are really starting to heat up. I hope you're excited for the next couple of episodes where things get really crazy. Give a like if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see the next episode. Shout out to Balan Aura University and Enzo Rafael Souza Silva for being channel members. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to have your name shouted out at the end of my video, please consider supporting the channel by getting a membership. Yeah, I don't have any fatherly advice today. Um, just stay good, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.